My name is Tom Wiles and I'm Secretary of the Butler Stafford Bridge Society. Uh, this year, 2016, marks a, a notable year in British history, but particularly for Stamford Bridge because it's the 905th anniversary of the battle that took place here. Where it was a huge battle where basically the Vikings met the Saxons and the Saxons won, uh, only to lose three weeks later at Hastings when the Normans won. So to mark this anniversary, We've embarked on uh, a tapestry project which links the Bayer tapestry and the Fulford tapestry which depicts the two battles either side of, of Stamford Bridge. Stamford Bridge was the middle battle and uh, we have about 20 to 30 people working at the moment uh, with great enthusiasm. But to an idea we had about a year ago, we put it all together and now we're working flat out to produce a, our, our own tapestry depicting the, the story of the battle and I want to make sure that it does tell the true story of Stamford Bridge and put the records right because Stamford Bridge, like Fulford, are the forgotten battles of 1066. Uh, Hastings is remembered because it's always the winners that write the history and William Murray Hastings and he wrote the history of 1066. Tapestry, we decided, consists of initially 12 panels, each one metre long. Myself and Chris Rock, who's the chair of the society, got together and decided how we're going to depict the story uh, to get as much of the story as possible, but without being too short. So 12 metres was as, as concise as we could get it. So we came up with a storyboard. Each panel has its own story from when uh, Harold Hardrada and Tostig went to York after the Battle of Fulford. It ends, of course, with the death of Harold Hardrada. We base it on the, on the Bayer Tapestry. We're not copying the Bayer Tapestry. We're actually doing it in the style and the spirit of the Bayer Tapestry. So it's the same size and same scale, and it looks very much like it. The problem with the Bayer Tapestry is we haven't got any representations of the Vikings or the, or the Scandinavians or the Northmen. We've got, obviously, the Saxons and the Normans, and that's great for, for researching and using some information from the Saxon side. So I've had to, I've had to adapt the imagery from Bayo into a more Scandinavian style. Um, obviously the clothing they're wearing, although very similar, even, even at the time the weapons and the armour was pretty similar throughout the whole of Europe, there would have been little differences. So although it was a hot late summer's day, we, we, we knew they were lightly armoured and lightly clothed, probably, so I've had to reflect that in some of the drawings. When you do look at the bio tapestry, what, what the artist or the artists then captured, they, they captured certain um, reflexes or certain, like, you know, the way the horses looked, you know, the way that the saddles worked, the way the bridles worked, uh, the way they, they held the shields or the way they used the spears. And the more you look at it, the, more, they, they actually, the, the more detail you get from it. My name is Shirley Smith and I'm a professional embroiderer. I was asked to come down initially to have a look at what was going on and uh, it became evident that uh, someone was needed to sort of lead the stittering side of, of the project. So uh, I volunteered to do that. I take over when Tom produces the drawing and uh, the drawing is then transferred onto white cotton which is fastened onto a wooden frame. We then stretch another layer of fabric on, on the frame and we then have the problem of getting the image through onto the right side. And this is done by turning the frame over and stitching through the drawn design on the back. We use a, just a running stitch in a fine cotton and we use the colour which we think we're going to use for the outlining. When that's done, we turn the frame over and work from the top and we use the first of just two stitches, an outline stitch, very similar to a stem stitch, but work the other way around. The design is then filled in with what is known as Bayer stitch. This was the stitch used originally on the Bayer tapestry. This is a laid uh, stitch which fills in big areas quickly and economically with the thread. The Colours we chose are as similar as we could get them to match the colours that are used on the original Bayer tapestry. Eight of them in the main with two extra highlighting colours for the regal characters. Most of the stitching is very straightforward. I think the part that people find the most difficult is the characters that have 
chainmail, it's quite difficult to depict that in lo lots of tiny circles. But we've worked out several ways of doing it, so there, there is a variety. The Bayo Tapestry is a great artistic piece, but it's also some propaganda for the, the Normans to tell their side of the story. So in a way, what I'm trying to do with our story is introduce elements which you know we can relate to in Stamford Bridge. So for example, when, when the, the invaders get to Stamford Bridge, I've depicted them as, as doing a bit of hunting, because they've obviously walked 12 miles on a hot day, they'll be thirsty, they'll be hungry. This guy's decided to lay a line out, try and catch maybe a, a salmon or a fish. This guy's got a duck. This guy's just about to shoot an arrow into one of the ducks. You know, so it's bringing these little elements that exist in Stamford Bridge now, because obviously there's ducks there now. I, mean, I would have thought a thousand years ago there would have been ducks on the pond then. Um, and that's the way to look at history, I think, is, is to see them as humans and not just pages in a book. Uh, since starting the tapestry in uh, on the end of September last year, 2015, we've now moved on so well that we've got six panels, half the tapestry on the go at the moment. The first panel is actually complete in terms of the storyline. We still have the, the borders, top and bottom, to go on, plus the text. The others are coming on uh, various stages at the moment, but the idea is we may have them finished by September, anniversary battle. There's no rush in this. We do want to rush and make sure it's done properly. But we'll certainly have a lot to show at the anniversary of September. The first panel uh, depicts the end of the Battle of Fulford, where Harold and Tostig go to York to demand they bring hostages to Stamford Bridge. Uh, and then it goes back in time, uh, where you see King Harold Godwinson on the throne in London. And he, he hears the messages that the Vikings have actually landed on the east coast of Britain and sacked and burned Scarborough. So this is about a week before the Battle of uh, Fulford. The end of the first panel is him sending messengers out to gather his army to come to Stamford Bridge. Well, basically, the, the, the whole tapestry depicts that one day's battle in 1066. The, the first panel is really introducing our characters of, of Godwinson and Hadrada uh, and Tostig. We've got basically the end of the Fulford battle, I was taken over from that point onwards. Tostig Gobinson go into York and they demand hostages. And then the hostages are obviously told to be at Stamford Bridge in, in five days time, which is where the premise of the whole reason for the battle taking place at Stamford Bridge comes from. The panel three is the arrival at Stamford Bridge, awaiting for the hostages. They've come on a, on a hot day, lightly armoured, uh, with light weapons, uh, not expecting no trouble. Of course, they don't realise that by the 25th, Harold Godwinson, the King of the English, had arrived in York uh, and it goes straight out to meet them in battle. Harold Hadrada, the Viking King, only took two thirds of his army to Stamford Bridge. He left one third back at Rickle in camp. So he's, he's undermanned, he's lightly armoured, and he's, he's caught off guard. And by pound five, really, the, the battle's starting. Uh, the, the, the meeting on the riverbanks, the fighting over the bridge. We have the giant on the bridge defending it. He supposedly held back the English army for two or three hours, killed 30, 40 Saxons single-handedly, uh, whilst his army formed up on the east bank. And eventually, one English guy got in a, a tub under the bridge, got his spear, and took the guy down from below. Uh, and then obviously from panel uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it's really the, the main focus of the battle taking place on the West Bank with the shield wall and with that horrible slaughter of, of thousands of men hacking each other to pieces. Uh, and that's really where the panels from 8, 9, 10, 11 go into the detail uh, with the deaths of Hadrada, the death of, of Tostig, and then the Vikings fleeing for their lives back to camp at Rickle and then eventually back home. It's, they came in 250 ships, and they went back home in about 24, 25 ships. So that's really where our story ends. Harold Godwinson, great victory for the Saxons, for the English, end of the Viking Age in Britain. He, he goes back to York, celebrates, uh, but within two or three days, he, he's told of the Normans arriving at Pevensey on the south coast. Our, our story ends on Harold leaving York to go down south to fight the Normans at Hastings. Today we have been here at the village hall where we were 
privilege to welcome the Archbishop of York, Dr. John Sentimu, and he has also shown a lot of interest in, in the tapestries. We went to the, um, the new inn in the village to meet Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall. When they visited the village, uh, mainly, it has to be said, because of the flooding at Christmas, but they were both exceptionally interested in, in our panels and have asked to be kept informed, so we thought we might send them some, some up-to-date photos. So, to uh, celebrate and commemorate this year, the Battle of Stafford Bridge Society has organised many events, fundraisers, we need to fundraise, we need a lot of money to book the show off because we've got a big event planned on the 24th and 25th of September, which is, 25th was the actual day of the battle, although the, the battle was on a Monday, it's on a Sunday, but it doesn't matter, we're planning a big reenact, we've had five re small reenacts so far, uh, and this is where we're ex uh, inviting the world to come to Stamford Bridge and take part in a huge organisation. So there's lots of things to see and do, and we're trying our best to raise as much as we can in terms of funding and, and uh, events in the village, uh, organise it, but the whole community get involved. It's a, it's a whole community project, like the tapestry. The whole community I think, needs to get involved, we want to get involved, but it's part of our history, part of England's history as well. So if you have a chance, come to Stamford Bridge in September, look on our website, uh, it's information there, <coughs> and the tapestry as well, and we'd love to see you.